this group of guys in that environment with that support um, is special. It's, it, it's really special. I don't take it for granted um, one bit. I, I, I tried to soak up every moment of it. It was hard because I'm trying to coach too. But, you know, I, as I say all the time, these guys are a byproduct of each other. I'm just a good coach because I got good players that trust me and believe in what we're doing. And that crowd today was incredible. And that so flow rodeo, they had it jumping in there. That herd of thunder band, that amazing as always. But if I'm not mistaken, well, that thing was sold out up to the third level. This ain't the same old South Florida, my brother. It's not. We'll open it up for the players first. Guys, for both of you, two questions. You flip the switch, switch script today. <laughs> you get out to a leader early. What happened to make you guys come out on fire? It's just the, the prep um, head up to um, this game, man, is the most important part. And then we know that this whole season, this whole conference season, we've been struggling with starting the game off right. So it's been a point, point of emphasis for the past week. Uh, just picking up what he said, um, the prep was really good. It was focused the whole the whole um, week, um, prep for this game. Even though it was a big game, but we took like this or another game. Um, and that's what happened. Yeah. Last Two minutes and some change. Walker gets a huge block, then comes down and throws a Kawhi Leonard quadruple boink up on a free throw. How important was that? Uh, every every point is important, especially that one because it was in transition and we was coming down and it was trailing us. So just passing that, making the right play, and Corey got the layup. So it was really important. Okay, well, uh Chris Dusty may impress get, gave you a lot of credit about you know you finding your spots uh, on the court. Speaking of the game plan, what, what what were you seeing out there defensively? I bet you were switching a lot. It seems like you were trying to attack mismatches. Just what was the game plan for you to that allowed you to have such a good day? I uh, just see the rim. Um, <laughs> when I see the rim, it really don't matter who's put the hands down. So just but, but my teammates definitely. Uh, my teammates trust me. Um, they give me the ball. Uh, they they know how good I am. Uh, one-on-one -on -one situation, so they trust me, and that's what happened. For both of you guys, talk a little bit about how your experience played a huge role in, you know, at certain points carrying the Bulls even to, you know, the lead over 20 points. Yeah, I think that's a big, that's probably, probably an important part for um, this this past game because, like, we came out hot, and it's easy, like, amateur teams and experienced teams, they just lay down, they start just doing anything and that's how you lose leads quick, but they did come back, but our experience and our uh, perseverance, man, just let us get out this win. Sure, um, definitely, just picking up what he said, um, we definitely had a, got young and, and an old team, but more old team, uh, so we got guys that have been through it already, college, college-wise, um, just came together and just really understand the game, because sometimes when we up, and then we might just go, go and rest, but we never rest. Even though they're a good team, they kept fighting, so, but we never rest. Even though you guys have been through a lot of big games before, most of you anyway, was there any nervous energy you guys had to overcome perhaps early in the game? Uh, not for this game, cause I feel like that Charlotte game, guys prepare for environments like this. So that Charlotte game is pretty important. Although it wasn't sold out like it was today, but the Charlotte game was crazy. So that guys prepare for games like this and moving on forward. I know you guys have great experience, but uh, what was the feeling like? You get up 25, and then you look up there, and it's three now. What, what, what were you saying in your head? Hey, we're still up, and the game's not over with, so we still have a chance to win the game. Like the, the in our in our hurdles, man. I kept on saying composure, composure, and just relax, man, because well, we've been in this position before on the other side, so we know what to do and how to go about everything. Going off the uh, the last question, it almost felt like you guys were like off of the crowd. What was it like just playing that atmosphere from your perspective? Uh, for me, it's really special. Um, it's my second year here. We didn't have that last year. We didn't have a good season last year. So just coming in this year with that 
most, I mean, most, almost every every game we play at home is really special for us. Give us energy, regardless if we up down, up twenty or down twenty. Just help us, give us momentum, and that really like lead us to win the game. From a player's perspective, um, is there a rivalry between FAU and USF for either of you? I mean, it depends what you like. What makes a rivalry? Like, I, I guess no, because they're in the same conference. They we both from Florida, so because you you see our flag, so I guess it's rivalry. When you guys came into this game, do you feel that FAU did come in as advertised? Obviously, a year ago they went to the Final Four. They've been playing good basketball all year, and albeit you got off to a good start, but then they kept hanging around and hanging around and hanging around. But this is a pretty good basketball team, and right at the top of the conference. Yeah, we we came in like we respect the FAU big time because based off what they did last year and what they're doing this year, same group of guys, man. So we've been keeping up with them. So we, we, even when we was up, man, we know like they're capable of coming back just like we are. So man, we just kept that in mind, but yeah, they got our respect. Chris, walking through that last trip in the free throw line there, the chance to put, put it out of two possession game. What was going through your head there? Oh, when I, when I missed that first one, I, I, was, I just started laughing. I think if you see on camera, you see me smiling after I missed it. I'm like, there's no way I meant to miss this one. But I just, that play is 57. I'm really not much to think about. It, it got chippy all throughout the game, physical game. Is there kind of any thoughts on that? Or just, you know, is it just a physical game or is there any sort of mental in there? No, it ain't no bad. It was part of the game. Yeah, I think we knew the game would be like this. I mean, they're both good teams. They come in with a hype. And I had to play through it. Selden, it had to be nice back in Angola. You're not worrying about people being up at 3, 4, 5 in the morning watching the game. You know, you play at noon, at least they get a decent time to watch it, huh? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I had a lot of people watching. I told them we would be at 12, so it's like 5 back home. And they're really proud of it. So ESPN grabbed a lot of people watching. <laughs> Anything else for players? Congratulations, guys. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, guys. Good with us. Y'all always leave me in here. No support. No. We're going to open it up for Coach. Coach, uh, just to get this out of the way, you were ninth in the preseason polls, and now you sit comfortably at number one in the conference. How, how do you guys take this momentum you have into the rest of the season and into the tournament? I said last week, you know, these, ne these next few weeks for our group, for our program, it's going to be about growth and humility, right? Um, the truth of it is, and I, I, I pray this doesn't come off arrogant, but we didn't look at any preseason polls. But we knew some, you know, people would tell us, yeah, they picked you here, but we didn't look at it. Just like, to be honest, we don't look at the record, the, the, uh, the standings right now. We just stay focused on like where we are today, right? And try to grow and try to get better and try to stay humble, you know, through the success. As, as I say to these guys all the time, you know, you, you, you develop character a lot of times through adversity, right? You, you find out who you are, but really who you are is the character that you show through prosperity, through success. And um, to their credit, man, every day they've come in the gym with the same hunger, same attitude. Um, I don't, they don't practice like they're in first place. You know, they practice like they're focused on today. And that's what we gotta make sure we do. And when FAU went on that 15 0 run, which, you know, gave, gave the visiting fans some hope, it seemed to give them hope they're standing on the bench. Just what was said in the huddle to kind of calm things down and allow you guys to close out? You know, with 422 left in the game, we were up 12. And I said to the guys, I said, fellas, like, I know it feels like things, like everything's bad right now, but you're still up 12. Think about how many times we played this scenario in practice, right? Where we'll do end of the game scenarios up 10, up 12, whatever it may be. Sometimes, a lot of times, it's, you know, a team is only up six. And what is it about? Man, it's about character, it's about toughness, and execution on both ends of the court. And these two, the dudes who were sitting right here a second ago, um, man, I, I feel good every day I walk out there knowing I got two higher nuns. And I say that, you know, with all respect, you know. And, and these dudes, they, they're, anytime I hear a ball bouncing in the gym, I peek out my my office window, it's one or the other, it's one or the two, right? And so you look at those numbers, Selvin gets 25, Chris gets 23. Again, I say it humbly, it doesn't surprise me. These dudes, they work their face off.
to so, so she come out eight of thirteen. I'm sorry. No, no, you good. I was just gonna say that, uh, but I take that. You come out eight of thirteen from three. You're eleven of eleven from three <coughs> throw line. Have you ever come out hotter than that? Were you here for UTSA? 11-11 from free throw line, 8-13 from three. But were you here for UTSA? Yeah, that was pretty good too. That was elite. Yeah. But I say, again, it's preparation. You know, it's preparation and it's sharing the ball. Again, guys, we won that game because mm -hmm. we had 12 assists on 27 made baskets, but we only turned it over eight times. Like when you can get shots at the basket, you know, with, with a really talented group of guys that work hard, man, things are going, <laughs> going to normally go pretty good because they've earned the right to not only play in that game, but to make those shots. So no, we couldn't ask for a better start, um, but I thought defensively is where we set the tone, you know, because where they make you look really bad is in transition. And we put a big emphasis on our transition defense. Hey. If we can get our transition defense intact, set the table, and make them play against our half court defense, you know, they're good, man. <laughs> like, they're good. I was just texting with Coach Kennedy, uh, who Dusty and I worked for, uh, who Coach May and I worked for at Murray State, and I said, man, prayerfully, we made you made you proud. He said, man, great day, made us really proud. So, they're good. They're a good team. Coach, you knew they were going to make a run at you. They're just too good a team not to. They get it to one with like 22 seconds left. Now I'm going to use your lines now. The hot team would have folded. The consistent team found a way to win. Yeah. Would that explain it? The consistent and connected <clears throat> team found a way to win. Um, again, with these guys, they live in a very individualistic society where everything's about the individual. And as I said time and time again, they chose to be a team. All right, we had eight guys score today. We had eight guys score. Yeah, Chris and Selton got 25 and 23 respect. But then, you know, you get eight from Corey, you get eight from Jose, another eight from Kobe, five from Brandon, nine from Jaden, four from uh, Case and Pryor, who, like, we just won a game, guys, with Case and Pryor getting four points. You know, but I love this energy. I love this. I love this connection with his teammates, and that's what it's about. Coach, as you leave for the game today, 